الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أب القاسم المصطفى محمد نصلي وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين صلى الله عليك يا رسول الله صلى الله عليك وعلى أهل بيتك المظلومين صلى الله عليك يا أبا عبد الله يا رحمة الله الواسعة ويا باب نجاة الأمة ويا عبرة كل مؤمن ومؤمنة يا غريب مظلوم كربلاء ما خاب من تمسك بكم وأمل من لجأ إليكم يا ليتنا كنا معكم فنفوز فوزا عظيما قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا تحسبن الذين قتلوا في سبيل الله أمواتا بل أحياء بل أحياء عند ربهم يرزقون صلى على محمد وآل محمد All over the world, on a day like this, the followers of the Ahlul Bayt and the ones who show love and mawadda towards the family of Rasulullah are gathered just like we are gathered here tonight. Gathered to shed a few tears, to give their condolences to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi to give their condolences to Fatima al-Zahra, to Amir al-Mu'mineen for the martyrdom of Aba Abdullah al-Hussein gathering to remember one of the the worst day in the history of this life the day where the grandson of Rasulullah an Imam who there was no one like him, the son of Fatima, and 18 members from the family of Rasulullah, and the companions of Imam al Hussein, they were butchered on the land of Karbala in the year 61 after Hijrah by a group of people that claimed to be Muslims, by a group of people that claimed to follow the religion of Islam. And we are gathering today to give our condolences to Rasulullah, to Amir al-Mu'mineen, to Fatima al-Zahra, because there's a flame in the hearts of the believers for the martyrdom of Aba Abdullah that is never extinguished. And this is a hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. He says, Inna liqatl al Hussein." حرارة في قلوب المؤمنين لا تبرد أبدا. There is a flame in the hearts of the believers that never comes down. You see, many people die 
There are many wars. There are many shuhada. But there is only Sayyid al-Shuhada, Aba Abdullah, who is constantly remembered year after year. We remember Imam al Hussein alayhi salam and we cry for Imam al Hussein. Someone might ask, why cry? Why so much jaza? Why do you make such a big deal about a man who was killed over a thousand years ago? The answer is that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi he was the first to cry for Imam al Hussein. Rasulullah in numerous traditions, numerous hadiths, he used to cry for Imam al Hussein. And this is narrated by the Sunnis and the Shias. We cry for Imam al Hussein because the Imams, Amir al Mu'mineen, cried for Imam al Hussein. Fatima al Zahra, the mother of Aba Abdullah, the day that she gave birth to Imam al Hussein, she cried for Aba Abdullah. While she was pregnant, with Imam al Hussein, she used to cry for Imam al Hussein. And she used to hear a voice, someone telling her, Ana al Shaheed, Ana al Mazloom, Ana al Achan. I am the martyr, I am the oppressed, I am the one who is the thirsty. She would ask Rasulullah, What is this? And he would tell her, This is your son Hussein who will be killed by my ummah. And all of the Imams, they cried for Imam al Hussein. And the Imam of our time, Imam al Hujjah, Hajjalallahu Ta'ala, Farajah al Sharif, he also cries for his grandfather, Aba Abdullah, just like we are gathering here to cry. He says in the ziyarah of Imam al Hujjah, Wa Jaddah, O oh grandfather, Fala'in akharatni al Duhur. وعاقني عن نصرك المقدور ولم أكن لمن حاربك محاربا ولمن نصب لك العدا مناصبا فلأندبنك صباحا ومساء ولا أبكين عليك بدل الدموع دما أو أبا عبد الله If I was not able to help you, if I was not able to physically fight for you I cry and I remember you and I shed tears and I shed blood my, I cry so much until my eyes begin to bleed for you, O oh Aba Abdullah. Today, when we are gathered to remember Imam al Hussein, we are not just remembering a person. We're remembering the one that Rasulullah cried for and the Imams cried for. This is the first reason why we cry for Imam al Hussein. The second reason is that Imam al Hussein is a ibrah and the Abra. He is a source that brings us to cry, to shed tears, but Imam al Hussein is also lessons. Imam al Hussein is an ideology. Imam al Hussein is principles. And we need the principles of Imam al Hussein even now and even today with the challenges that we face as Muslims, the everyday challenges. The greater challenges that the religion of Islam is facing. Today, one of the greatest dangers to the religion of Islam, it's not from outsiders. It's not from people who are from the outside that are attacking and bringing down the religion of Islam. It's people who say the Shahada and who might pray, who might read the Quran, but they are the ones who are destroying the Islam and destroying the Quran. These are the same people that Imam al Hussein fought. So, by holding on to Imam al Hussein, we are holding on to an ideology. We are holding on to the Quran. We are holding on to the Salah. We are holding on to the Tawheed. When we say the Ziyarah of Aba Abdullah, we say, Ashhadu anna ka qad aqamta as Salat, wa atayta al Zakat, wa amarta bil ma'roof, wa nahayta an al Munkar. Imam al Hussein. He gave his life for the sake of Salah. Imam al Hussein, he gave his life for the sake of the religion of Islam, for the sake of the continuation of the message of his grandfather, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Because it was only 50 years after the death of Rasulullah where a group of Muslims turned back over their heels. Just like the Quran describes, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرَّسُلِ 
أفإن مات أو قتل انقلبتم على أعقابكم Will you turn back over your heels after Rasulullah dies? A group of Muslims did turn back over their heels and they left the Quran and the message and the Tawheed and the Risala. And the clearest example that a group of Muslims did leave that is the massacre of Karbala. The massacre on the day of Ashura where the grandson of Rasulullah. We're not talking about someone who is very far in lineage to Rasulullah, his great, great, great grandson. This is the one who Rasulullah used to carry in front of the Muslims. This is the one who Rasulullah used to kiss in front of the Muslims. This is the one who Rasulullah used to say, Husaynun minni wa ana min Husayn, ahabballahu man ahabba Husayna. Husayn is from me and I am from Husayn. Now we understand Husayn is from me. Every grandfather says, my grandson is from me. But here Rasulullah says, وَأَنَا مِنْ Hussein," And I am from Hussein. This means that the message of Rasulullah, without Imam al Hussein, it would have died. It would have perished on the day of Karbala. Because a man like Yazid took power. The religion of Islam, it needed medicine. Just like when someone is sick, the religion of Islam was frail. There was a cancer within the ummah. The religion of Islam, it needed a medicine. Someone to revive the religion after a man like Yazid took power. And that medicine was the blood of Aba Abdullah to be spilled on the ground of Karbala to give the religion its life back and to give the religion its essence back. And the poet says on behalf of Imam al Hussein, In kana deen o Muhammadin lam yastakim illa biqatli faya suyufu khudini. If the religion of my grandfather, Rasulullah, does not survive only with my death, then let me die. And this is what Imam al Hussein did. He gave the ultimate sacrifice for the religion of Islam. He gave the ultimate sacrifice so you and I can stand and pray. So you and I can go to Hajj. So you and I can fast. So you and I know the true religion. Because Imam al Hussein, all that he did was that he did not give legitimacy to a man like Yazid. If Imam al Hussein would have stayed quiet and Yazid would have taken power, Imam al Hussein, he could have stayed in his home. He could have stayed in Medina. All he would have had to do is give bay'ah to Yazid and he wouldn't have been harmed. Yazid would have probably sent money for Imam al-Hussein. But Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam, he saw that if he allows a man like Yazid to take power, then that means he, the grandson of Rasulullah, is giving legitimacy to a man like Yazid. So Imam al-Hussein, in order to save the religion of Islam, he gave the ultimate sacrifice. A sacrifice that no one throughout history has given a sacrifice like Aba Abdullah al Hussein. Where not only he sacrifices himself, but he sees his family and his children one after the other being killed. And Imam al Hussein was not after power. Imam al Hussein was not after this dunya. Sometimes you see people, they go and they risk their lives. They risk many things that they have for the sake of dunya, for the sake of seeking power. But Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, his goal was Amr bin Ma'roof and Nahi an al Munkar. His goal was to revive the faith and give the faith its life once again. This is why he says, I cannot give you bay'ah. أنا وإن الدعي ابن الدعي قد ركز بين اثنتين بين السلة أو الذلة وهيهات من الذلة يأبى الله ذلك لنا ولرسوله وحجور طابت وطهرت وألوف حمية على أن تؤثر طاعة اللئام على مصارع الكرام أبا عبد الله الحسين he said they gave me two options the one who claims who his father is, Adda'i. He doesn't even know who his father is. Zainab calls him Yabna Marjana in his own court. 
A man like Ibn Ziyad, who has a legitimate birth, he wants to give Imam Al Hussein an option. Ala wa inna da'i ibn da'i qad rakaza bayna thnatayn. He has given me two options. Bayna sillah, either the swords and the arrows, awa dhillah, or humility. Wa hayhat minna dhillah. And this is the lesson, my dear brothers and sisters, that we learn from Imam Al Hussein. Today, you look at the followers of Imam Al Hussein, the ones who shed tears for Imam Al Hussein. Wherever you see them, you see that they are not dhalil. They are not humiliated. And we learn from Imam Al Hussein that we would rather be killed and we would rather be tortured, but we will not be humiliated. And this is how Imam Al Hussein gave Islam its beauty. And this is how Imam Al Hussein gave life back to the religion of Islam. The men that were killing Imam Al Hussein, they were trying to not only kill a man on the day of Ashura, their war was against Rasulullah. Their war was against the Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Yazid, he had the head of Imam Al Hussein. After they brought the head of Imam Al Hussein, he began to recite poetry towards the head of Imam Al Hussein. He says, "Leita ashiyahi bi Badr shahidu jaza al khazraj waq al asal la ahlu wa stahlu farhan thumma qalu ya Yazid al Fatshal." He says, "Only if my grandfathers, the ones who were killed by the sword of Ali ibn Abi Talib." Only if they were here to see that I have the head of the grandson of Rasulullah. And then he says, لعبت هاشم في الملك. Bani Hashim played with power. فلا وحي جاء ولا خبر نزل. It was not an issue of a revelation or angels coming down upon Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وآله. What option does Imam Al Hussein have? Imam Al Hussein, he saw that he was the only one that could defend the faith on that day. They did not only try to kill Imam Al Hussein. By killing Imam Al Hussein, they tried to kill Rasulullah. By killing Imam Al Hussein, they tried to kill the Quran. This is why when Shimmer he came on the ninth of Muharram, a day like this, the night of the Ashura, he came with a letter with Abaydullah bin Ziyad from Abaydullah bin Ziyad from Kufa. There were the, the armies; they were gathering. They were multiplying as the days increased. First it was 1,000 on the 2nd of Muharram, then thousands and thousands. They began to come until a night like this. They had all arrived in Karbala, 30,000. And this is according to the least of traditions, the least hadith, the least number. He comes with a letter from Ubaidullah bin Ziyad telling him, begin the war right now. Begin the war on the 9th of Muharram. And then the letter also says, kill Hussein, and after you kill him, فَالْتَطَأِ الْخَيْلُ صَدْرَهُ وَظَهْرَهُ Let the hooves of the horses crush the chest of Aba Abdullah. This is what they wanted to do. And this is what they did. They thought that by killing Imam Al Hussein, they will kill the religion of Islam. On the day of Ashura, Imam Al Hussein's bones were crushed. Every single bone in the body of Aba Abdullah was broken. They broke every single bone thinking that by doing that they will be able to destroy the religion of Islam and the message of Rasulullah. However, Allah says in the Quran, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتًا بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ عَنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ يُرْزَقُونَ They have a plan, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has another plan. And the plan of Allah is the successful plan. The plan of Allah is what worked, and this is why until today you are gathered here to remember Imam al Hussein. Otherwise, where do you see a person that people, they gather and they remember him over 1,400 years after his death? They tried to wipe out the family of Rasulullah. Even that six-month-old child, Ali al-Azghar, they killed him. 
They did not want to leave anyone from the children of Rasulullah alive. So that this message, so that the Rasala of Rasulullah dies with Aba Abdullah on the day of Ashura. But Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had planned something else for him. And we learn from Imam al Hussein that if you work for Allah, if your intentions are pure for Allah, you will be eternalized. And this is how Imam al Hussein is eternalized today. Imam al Hussein was born on the day of Ashura. Imam al Hussein's remembrance, it began on the day of Ashura. Every time they tried to kill him, every time they destroyed the grave, you know the grave of Aba Abdullah was destroyed numerous times by one of the Abbasi caliphs, Al Mutawakkil Al Abbasi. He destroyed the grave, he tried to destroy the grave of Aba Abdullah over 18 times. Anyone that goes and visits Imam al Hussein, there have been wars. This is th this what you see right now, where people are killing, governments are persecuting and killing the Shia. This is nothing new. During the times of the Imams, they used to see who goes and visits Imam al Hussein. They would tell him, "Give us a tax." They saw that that did not stop people from visiting Imam al Hussein. They come and they tell him, give us your hand, we will cut off your hand. In order to visit Aba Abdullah, we will cut off your hand. They give their hand and they would cut off their hands to visit Imam al Hussein. The next year, a person goes to visit Imam al Hussein. They tell him, give us your right hand. He says, my right hand was cut off last year, take my left hand. This is what Imam al Hussein teaches us. He teaches us to sacrifice. He teaches us that blood defeats the sword. As long as you are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as long as you remain your Iman strong. Because this was what Imam al Hussein did. And the companions of Imam al Hussein, look at Abu al-Fadl al Abbas, that brother of Imam al Hussein, that loyal brother of Imam al Hussein who was with Imam al Hussein not because Imam al Hussein was his brother. He was with Imam al Hussein because he saw that he had a duty towards the Imam of his time. They cut off his right hand. He says, Wallahi in qata'tumu yameeni inni uhami abadan an deeni. He says, you cut off my hand, but I'm going to protect my faith. وَعَنْ إِمَامٍ He doesn't say, and my brother. He says, وَعَنْ إِمَامٍ صَادِقِ الْيَقِينِ نَجْلِ النَّبِيِّ الطَّاهِرِ الْأَمِينِ Stood with the Imam of his time. My dear brothers and sisters, today we are gathered here to remember Imam al Hussein and to commemorate Imam al Hussein. However, we have to pick up lessons. Today, the family of Imam al Hussein on a night like this, they were in the camp. And there was 30,000 that wanted to kill the grandson of Rasulullah. And 72, 73 men who were with Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. The day of Ashura teaches us that we have to make decisions in life. 30,000, they made a decision to kill Imam al Hussein, to watch Imam al Hussein be killed. And only 72 men remained with him. My dear brothers and sisters, we have to also make a decision. Which side are we on? Are we on the path of Aba Abdullah, who symbolized Salah that day? Imam al Hussein, he gave his life for the sake of Salah. Sayyidah Zainab and the woman of Imam al Hussein, they sacrificed for the sake of hijab. The Ahl al Bayt. They sacrificed for the sake of the zakat and the hajj and the, and the salah and the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So tonight, let me choose which camp am I on? Am I on the camp of Aba Abdullah or am I on the camp of the enemies of Imam al Hussein? The enemies of Imam al Hussein, they said, no, we're choosing this dunya. They tried to fool themselves. One of them was Umar bin Sa'd. He was the leader, he was the general of the army that killed Imam al-Hussein. Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, he comes and he tells him, Oh Umar, 
O oh, Umar ibn Sa'd, I want you to be the general of the army that stands in front of Imam al Hussein, and I will give you the Imarah, I will give you the leadership of Ray. Ray is part of Tehran today. I will give you that, you could go and rule over there. Umar ibn Sa'd, he saw that he's going to have power, he's going to have leadership, he's going to be rich. After he takes, after he becomes the governor of an area. And then he comes and he, he's deciding between himself. He says, He says, should I leave Ray when Ray is all that I've been wishing for my whole life? But I have to kill Hussein. And then Shaytan comes to him. He says, yes. They say there is heaven and there is hell and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold people accountable. If they are correct, I will repent to Allah after two years. He thought that he could fool Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will kill the grandson of Rasulullah and then he will repent two years later. My dear brothers and sisters, on a night like this, we have to make a decision which camp we are on which side we will be with. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, he symbolized the side of Haq, the camp of Haq and truth and Iman, and that camp symbolized the camp of Shirk and Nifaq and disobedience and arrogance. A camp that 30,000 men were unanimous in the murder and the oppression of their, their prophet's grandson, Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam teaches us that we have to make difficult decisions sometimes in life. Now some, sometimes, some of us probably we can say, I could never be like Imam al Hussein. How can anyone expect me to be like Imam al Hussein? Yes, we can't be like Imam al Hussein. But we could be like the companions of Imam al Hussein. Imam al Hussein, he had companions that came in all ages, in all forms. He had from the old man, Habib ibn Mudahir, to the six month old child. He had women, he had children, he had converts. Wahab al Kalbi, who was a convert, who was with Imam al Hussein. He even had a slave and freed slaves that wanted to defend themselves, to defend Imam al Hussein and the Imam of their time. My dear brothers and sisters, tonight is the night of Ashura. Let us turn our hearts to Karbala. If you have not cried for Imam al Hussein, cry on a night like this because Rasulullah and Fatima are crying. Cry for Imam al Hussein because Imam al Rida alayhi salam says, Ya ibn Shabib, in kunta baki al lishayin fabki li jaddi al Hussein, fakad dhubiha kama yubbah al kaj, O son of Shabib. If you cry for anything, then cry for my grandfather Hussein. On a night like this, as the sun was going down, it was dusk, Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, he heard the noise, the drums of the war. He tells his brother Abu al Fadl al Abbas, he tells him, Binafsi and, oh my dear brother, Binafsi and, go and see what they want. What's this drumming? What's the sound? Al Abbas, he goes back, and then he comes moments later. He says they want to begin the war right now. They want to begin the fighting right now. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, he tells Abu al Fadl al Abbas, Oh my dear brother, tell them, tell them, Falyum hiluna sawad haadi al layla, fa inna rabbi ya'lam inni ma ziltu hibbu al salah wa tilawat al Quran. Go and tell them, let them give us the darkness of this night. Not so that we can have another day to live. 
but because my Lord knows that I want to spend this night praying and reciting the Quran. And this is what the camp of Imam al Hussein on a night like this, this is what they were doing. They were they were worshipping, they were praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another event that took place on a night like this, Imam Zayn al-Abideen alayhi salam, he says, I was in the tent and my aunt Zainab, she was taking care of me. Imam Zayn al-Abideen was sick, he was frail. He says, my aunt was taking care of me. I heard my father sitting outside the tent while he was fixing his sword and he was saying, he was eulogizing himself. He was saying, Ya Dahru Uffin Laka Min Khalili Kam Laka Bil Ishraqi Wal Asili Min Talibin Bi Haqqihi Qatili Wa Dahru La Yaqna'u Bil Badili Wa Kullu Hayyan Salikun Sabili He says, Khanaqatni Al Abra I began to cry but my aunt Zainab, she could not control herself. She went to Imam al Hussein. She tells him, O Khayyaba Abdullah, Araka Tana Nafsak, Al Yom Mata Jadia, Al Yom Mata Al Mustafa, Al Yom Mata Tummi, Fatima Tul Zahra, Al Yom Mata Al Murtaba, Al Yom Mata Al Mujtaba. Oh, my dear brother, I see that you are eulogizing yourself. How can you leave? Us. How can you be killed? Imam al Hussein, he tells her, Okay, oh, Zainab ta'azzay bi'azai Allah, wa alami anna ahla al ard yamutun, wa ahla al samai la yabkun. Jaddi khayrun minni, abi khayrun minni, ummi khayrun minni, akhi khayrun minni. He tells her, My grandfather and my mother and my father and brother, they all are better than me and they died so I see that they are role models we are all going on this path we will all die eventually Sayyidah Zainab began to cry the hadith says that Imam al Hussein alayhi salam he placed his hand on her chest and after he did that it brought the calmness to Sayyidah Zainab she felt the calmness and then Imam al Hussein he tells her, Oh Zainab, I will be killed tomorrow, and we will all be killed, and the tent will be burned. Oh Zainab, you have the responsibility after me. You will have to take care of the children after me. You will have a very difficult road ahead of you after me. She promises him that she will fulfill her responsibility. Imam al Hussein on the day of Ashura. On the day of Ashura, after everyone was killed, after Abu al Fadl al Abbas and the companions were all killed, he stood to say his final farewell. He stood to say his final farewell. But before doing so, he saw that his son Ali al-Azgar Abdullah al -Radih, that six-month-old child of Imam al Hussein, he saw that that child was going to die out of thirst. His mother did not have milk to give him because she had not drank water or eaten food. 
So he takes his son, Ali al-Azhar, he takes him and he wears the cloak of Rasulullah and he rides a camel so they know that he's not going to fight. He has something to tell them. He hides the child under his cloak and he goes forward. They don't know what he has under his cloak. Some say he has a Quran. Others, they're confused. Then they see Imam al-Hussein, he, bring he brings out a six-month-old child. He tells them, Ya qawm in kana li dambun, fama dambu hadha al-radih. If I have hurt you, if I have done something wrong, then what has the six-month-old child done to you? And the, the army, they begin, they were divided. Some said, give him water. Others said, do not give him water. Let them all die out of thirst. The son of Imam al Hussein, Imam al Hussein tells them, You can even take them, you can take him and you give him water if you are afraid that I will drink from the water. Amar bin Saadi calls Harmala, he tells him, Ya Harmala, Tanza al Qawm, oh Harmala, I don't want my army to be divided over a six month old child. Harmala says, What should what should I do? He says, don't you see the child and the neck of the child that is shining? Harmala says, I had a three-pronged arrow. I had that arrow with me. I aimed. I saw that the wind moved the Aba and the neck of the child was shown. I shot the child in his neck. He was decapitated from that shot from that arrow that I shot him. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, suddenly he looks at his child. He sees that his child has been butchered. He places his hand under the neck of the child and he throws the blood in the sky. Imam al Baqir says, Wallah, not a drop of blood came back. And Imam al Hussein, he heard a caller. He heard someone telling him from the sky, Da'hu ya Hussein, fa'inna lahu murda'at bil jannah. Hussein, leave him. <laughs> leave him, oh Hussein. He will be quenched in paradise. Now Imam al Hussein, he says, Ilahi la yakun ahwan alayk min fasil naqati salih, meaning that, oh Allah, you punish the people of Prophet Salih because they killed a camel. Is my son less than a camel? Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, he comes back. The children, they stand in front of Imam al Hussein, they tell him, Oh Abba Abdullah, you gave Ali al Azgar water, we also want water. <laughs> Imam al Hussein, he gives the child to Sayyidah Zainab, and he tells her, But Muah, they killed him, they butchered him, they did not give him a drop of water. Sahib al-Zaman, Imam al-Hujjah, he sends his salams to Ali al-Azhar. He says, As-salamu ala Abdullah al-Fadih, al-Marma al-Sarih. He says, O oh, salam for Abdullah al-Fadih. Ma tatasabbar bintadharik ayyuh al-Muhyi al-Shari'a. Sahib al-Zaman is crying right now. Ma tatasabbar fi intidharik ayyuh al-muhyi al-shari'a fanhaad fama abqa al-tahamwal gaira ahshayin jazu'a ma daayuh ijuk in sabart لوقعت الطف الفجيعة حي 
بيت الحسين على الثرى خيل العدا طعن الضلوع ورضيعه بدم الورد مخضب فضل برضيع لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون يا الله نسألك اللهم وندعوك باسمك العظيم الأعظم الأعز الأجل الأكرم يا الله Everyone with your loudest voices ten times يا الله يا الله يا الله يا الله يا الله يا الله قلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم ارزقنا زيارة الحسين اللهم ارزقنا شفاعة الحسين اللهم اجعلنا مع الحسين اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج واجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه والمستشهدين بين يديه اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه ارضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين وصلى الله على محمد وعلى اله الطاهرين